we are going to talk a little bit about T-Mobile. And T-Mobile is basically kind of blowing away the competition when it comes to 5G speed tests. Um, it's interesting, as I was looking, as I was kind of putting my thoughts together for this segment, uh, I saw a headline that got my attention and it reads like this, T-Mobile versus Verizon versus AT&T. So many new 5G and overall network experience tests one big winner. Um, that headline was from Phone Arena. And basically, as you might imagine, um, you know, what this is really is T-Mobile's move to acquire mid-band spectrum is paying off in spades. And, and both Verizon and AT&T have been slower to turn on C-band. And um, this is really paying off for, for um, T-Mobile. So I wanted to touch real quickly on some of the results from the speed tests. Um, Let's see. So T-Mobile has moved, and I'll put all of this in our show notes too, so you'll be able to see the graphs and everything from the report. But um, what's interesting with regard to T-Mobile, and, and this information, by the way, is from Open Signal. We'll touch on uh, another report that's just come out this week too. But according to Open Signal's testing data, um, T-Mobile has uh, logged in at about 171 um, Mbps, and that has increased from um, 150 during the September to December testing period. So that's a pretty considerable increase, um, dramatically extending its lead over both Verizon and AT&T. They both have improved going from, let's see, uh, Verizon went from 56.2 to 72.8. AT&T went from 49.1 to 53.6, but essentially T-Mobile's just killing it. So, um, you know, I'll also note uh, in some of these categories, Verizon actually wins um, in both the 5G gaming experience category and the 5G voice app category. But when it comes to 5G download speeds, which is a lot what a lot of people care about, 5G download speeds, upload speeds, 5G availability, 5G reach, T-Mobile takes it all in terms of winning uh, in these tests. And... Um, it, it's one of the things I mentioned download speed and how important that is. And, you know, we're all sitting here from time to time with our mobile devices, you know, waiting, trying to download things. Um, but T-Mobile's basically their, their download speed experience comes in double that of its rivals. Um, and that's pretty impressive. So it's landing, T-Mobile's landing at 61.7, AT&T is 34.4, Verizon is 29.8. That's pretty significant. And uh, most impressive of all, and where T-Mobile really shines, I think is keeping customers connected to 5G networks. Um, Open Signals tests show that T-Mobile keeps users connected 40% of the time on their phones. Um, AT&T finally beats Verizon here, coming in at 18.7 compared to Verizon's 10.6. So those are some pretty big disparity between numbers, I think. And um, so I thought that was awesome. That All that data was from the Open Signal report. And I'll just super quickly go over to um, Ookla released its Q2 2022 speed test report, which also, of course, shows T-Mobile dominating. They're not going to, you know, these testing... <laughs> They're not going to come out with markedly different results, right? Um, but uh, what I thought was interesting here, and again, 5G performance, T-Mobile dominated. Um, and, but one thing I think that's interesting is that, you know, I wanted to touch just a minute on how customers use networks. And Ookla's data showed that, um, that, most AT&T Verizon customers are still spending most of their time on 4G networks, even if they have a 5G capable device. Ron and I were just talking about this before we started this show. Um, only 28% of Verizon's customers with 5G phones spent more than half of their time on 5G networks. AT&T customers were more likely to use 5G, with 49% of them spending most of their time on faster networks. And T-Mobile subscribers with 5G phones were accessing 5G about half of the time. To me, what that all boils down to is that we, you know, of, of course, Ron and I and, you know, everyone working in this space understands how important 5G is and how significantly 5G is going to change, it is changing and will continue to change the world as we know it. That said, 
on the consumer front, I think many of us still, you know, are using 4G networks, don't know if we're using 4G networks or 5G networks, don't know if the phone that we have is a 5G phone, don't care. <laughs> you know, Ron, would you say that's probably the case based on our on our observations? Oh, yes. I think you're hitting the nail on the head there, Shelley. And in fact, even, you know, the most advanced, sophisticated users can sometimes be mystified as to what network they're right. on. And it definitely depends on, you know, uh, the device they're using and how much information right. it readily shares, et cetera. And, uh, but it is uh, fascinating, I think, uh, that uh, in terms of, you know, whether you're on a 5G network or a 4G network, it's attesting to the on-the-ground reality that many of the initial 5G deployments are using what is called a non-standalone implementation. And that is basically, it's the blending of 5G and 4G networks in order to at least, you know, deliver uh, you know, some uh, early 5G capabilities. Right. And what I think is important, though, about, you know, okay, if that's the case, uh, why is it a big deal that T-Mobile is registering, you know, these uh, speed test advantages and, you know, what, what does it really mean? Well, first of all, it helps capture early mind share. So it's always important Absolutely. to get out in front of this and, you know, to prove that, yeah, your network is uh, ahead and it's uh, really ready, you know, for when 5G really becomes uh, turbo boosted. And that is when 5G standalone implementations yeah. become more readily available to all users uh, across uh, the U.S., let alone, you know, in other uh, countries. And I think um, one important uh, fact that came out of the uh, test is that T-Mobile today, uh, their uh, 5G uh, Ultra capacity uh, package is available to 225 million users right. uh, today. But by the end of the year, they're expecting that to also extend to 260 million users. And by the end of next year, uh, that will be up to 300 million users. And so that's underlying the fact that uh, T-Mobile is advancing its 5G standalone capabilities and that uh, these speed advantages will start translating right. into more interesting use cases that can uh, definitely interest uh, monetization objectives right. or advanced monetization objectives, everything from uh, enhanced collaboration capabilities AR, VR, you hit on the uh, the gaming, uh, would certainly, right. I think, elevate uh, gaming for any user on any uh, network in the U.S. at least. And so, yeah, this this is definitely uh, important today. And I think uh, it's uh, a feather in T-Mobile's cap uh, that they're capturing this early mind share because we're, 5G will definitely be uh, coming on board with more capabilities over the next couple of years, at least. And that's when it's going to really matter even more when uh, you yeah. users, whether consumer or certainly an enterprise says, wow, okay, I, I see the difference now versus today yeah. where it's kind of uh, mystifying in many cases. Well, and what I think is interesting here is that, you know, what consumers really care about is network availability. Is it there? Is it going to work when I need it, right? Connectivity, do I have it? and I want to have it at all times, and speed. And they wanna be able to communicate when they want, they want consistent speed, they want performance from all their devices on the network. And you know, I don't wanna be impacted by the fact that I'm trying to use a device and somebody else on you know, my network is trying to do something else or whatever. But I think that where this is really significant is that you know, when you see headlines like this, when we have conversations in the analyst community and say, you know, T-Mobile is really dominating, and, you know, speed test after speed test after speed test. And by the way, you know, T-Mobile is not really only dominating as it relates to speed. There are many other variables here where, where T-Mobile is also, um, you know, let's see in the overall mobile experience category, uh, T-Mobile dominates reclaiming, by the way, games experience and voice experience from Verizon in this different category, same testing body, okay? And they're winning everything except service uh, availability, which AT&T gets, and 4G experience coverage, which Verizon gets. But if you're a consumer and you're thinking about getting a new phone, upgrading a phone, whatever, and you're consistently hearing that T-Mobile that is killing it when it comes to the things that matter the most to you, I don't know. You think that's maybe going to sway your decision about what service provider you want? 
Uh, oh, sure. I, that, I'm, I'm thinking at the it does. Least, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it, I, it's about value. You know, and it's right. and values tied to experience, and yes, you know, naturally security uh, factors into all this. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it, yeah, I don't know if it's even going to be about tiebreakers. It's just like they want the best value, and yeah. so uh, I don't even see co coin toss scenarios until AT and T and Verizon s quite simply up their game in these types of tests, yeah. and uh, so they're still runway. I mean, uh, the competitive mix Absolutely. is is still uh, evolving. And I'm also, as an editorial note, looking forward to seeing Dish in these tests. So, yeah. you know, that will give uh, uh, even more thought or options for, you know, customers out there. And right. certainly uh, the consumer side is always going to get uh, a lot of attention. But it's also, as we know, enterprises and businesses will Absolutely. need this for, you know, anything ranging from enhanced collaboration, work from home assurances, yeah. et cetera. Uh, you know, say in a, an emerging SASE type architecture and so right. forth. So all these things are, you know, coming together and I everything, think uh, everything plays its own little role, <laughs> but no, this exactly. is great. I mean, kudos to T-Mobile for, you know, all the work they've done on this front and for these great results. And, you know, we'll be, I mean, as always, we continue to watch uh, this space and, and look forward to what competitors are doing, whether it's Verizon, AT&T, Dish or anyone else. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to watch for sure.